Next one's from Matt. Matt says, if a client is in a small town, do you recommend using city plus state of their physical location in the title tag of their homepage? Or would you recommend using the nearest biggest city? Or what would you consider best practice? Well, it depends on what, you know, you're, you're talking about the homepage, but um, Matt, what, what is the location landing page URL? If it's a single location business, it's often going to be the homepage. Um, although I, I, I've got, I'm going to be doing some testing in the next couple of weeks. I've got three new GBPs that I've, I'm, I'm getting, and um, I'm going to do some testing with different configurations on those too. But so what I would recommend is if it's, if the homepage is the location landing page, meaning that's the website URL linked to from the Google business profile, then what I always recommend is that you optimize the location modifier in the SEO title for the specific city that it's in, Right. If you, if you want to rank in an adjacent town or city, that's fine. Create a separate page on the site that's optimized for that town or city. But what you're trying to do is, and I love, Ted, Ted Gubaitis said this, and it's, it, I love this. It's the simplicity of the statement that he said, which Google business profiles are looking for agreement with what they're looking, what they're linked to on the website. So in other words, if you want the Google business profile to perform better in search, provide agreement between how the profile is optimized and how the website is optimized, right? And so if you're linking to what I call the location landing page, the website URL linked to from the Google business profile, I want to go start with the brand name as the first part of the SEO title, because that's what Google does. Go look at Google business profile maps, go look at Google business profile websites, and you'll see it's always the Google business name is the first part of the SEO title. Then there's a separator, which is a hyphen. And then uh, Google appends its own brand google maps to the end of the gbp map but the end of the gb website you have a little bit of control over the other parts of the seo title and what's known as the description um so but google gives you helper text and it tells you for best results include and it says in quotes the primary google business category and then also the same city that the google business profile is physically located in so google's telling us how we should optimize location landing pages and google business assets Brand name first, Google business category next, uh, location modifier last, if that makes sense. So I always recommend that on the location landing page, provide agreement with the Google business profile. So therefore optimize brand, uh, Google business category, then the location that the Google profile is located in physically. If you want to rank in adjacent cities, that's fine. You can have other inner pages on the site that are optimized for those. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, yeah, because again, you want to provide agreement. And the way that Google profiles have uh, narrowed proximity considerably, because um, Google is really going hyper-local with search. And I mean, that's it's quite apparent. Uh, like proximity has been narrowing across the board for everybody for like the last two years. There's been two times that I know of that were significant um, updates. And then, but slowly it's like what they call mission creep or <laughs> scope creep or whatever. It's like Google's slowly creeping uh, uh, the proximity back to making it smaller essentially for all local businesses because of more hyper-localized results. So that's why I say, it, it, you know, it, 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 you always want to provide agreement with what the Google business profile um, is optimized for. So if it's in a particular city, you want to reinforce that or corroborate that entity information within the SEO title. So I always optimize for the city that it's located in. And I already can hear the questions or the people screaming at the, uh, I can hear you people screaming at the, the screen right now, but I'm in a small town. It doesn't get any search volume traffic. Fine. That's fine. Put a, create another page that is optimized for the cities that you want to get more traffic in. And with the proper internal linking and proper structure of the site, you can also get results for those too. Maybe not maps results, um, you know, like you would want, but you can still get map. You, I mean, you can still generate leads and get uh, ranked in those adjacent cities organically, maybe in maps, depending on how close they are. Uh, but, you know, trying to optimize and brute force a map into to, to, to pop into a maps three pack for an adjacent city when the Google profile is not located in that city is very, very difficult. And even if you can get it to appear, it's brief because Google is always going to be trying to push that out of the three pack to display businesses that are in closer proximity to the searcher in that specific city. 
So I always tell clients now is like, look, it, it just I'm trying to set up your expectations, um, Matt. And, and and I say the same thing to clients is like, look, I understand your Google profile is located in a city that doesn't get much volume. I understand that. But it's physically located there. You can't change that unless you change your location. So let's let's optimize the best that we can in the location that you're in to try to push the maps coverage out as far as we can. But once we kind of figure out where the threshold is, that it's just damn near impossible to expand beyond that or for it to stay expanded beyond that if we are able to do it, then we just we can either focus on just organic assets or Google ads plus organic assets, or you can always at that time try to uh, you know attempt to secure another Google business profile. Um, in the adjacent cities or the, the the town on the other side of the adjacent city, et cetera, so that you can kind of expand your maps coverage again. So that's kind of the way that I do it. And it, it, it guys, that's the way that it's going. Like, you know, it, hyper-localization, it is what it is. So we just need to adjust and adapt. And so that's the way that, you know, that's the way that I'm doing it for my agency. Hopefully that's clear, Matt. It's a good question. But always optimize for the city that you're located in first. Try to get the best results there first. Uh, once you've expanded the map to the point where it doesn't seem like it's going to expand anymore, um, you know, you can certainly add location pages for adjacent cities, et cetera, and that can help with pushing maps. But, you know, once you reach kind of the threshold where it doesn't seem like it's going to expand beyond that, then that's when it's time to look at other strategies, other methods, either secure an additional Google business profile or just focus on organic and Google and or Google ads, search ads. Hopefully that's clear.